Hello and welcome to our quick overview on AmbiMed. We are very pleased that you are interested in our company and especially in our software. Together, we will be able to decode urban nature, meaning that we are able to understand processes in our urban environment. And by that, we will be able to improve the living conditions and especially the total comfort in our cities. Our agenda today will be a quick look on our company profile at first. Then we will have a look at the general structure of our product, the microclimate model AnviMed. In the end, I will show you some examples on the application of the model. So let's talk about our, about our profile first. AnviMed features a huge community with more than 23,000 users worldwide from more than 145 countries. Our program is used by urban planners and architects, as well as residential and commercial property clients. However, the great success of our software is based on the large scientific community that has been using AmbiMed for decades. AmbiMed, which has been developed for over 25 years now, was used in more than 400 scientific papers found on Web of Science and even in more than 5,000 studies found via Google Scholar. But what is it all about? Why are people using our software? Well, they basically want to use a numerical simulation of the microclimate for planning purposes or scientific objectives. Altogether, Users of AmbiMed try to achieve one common goal, to ensure comfortable and healthy outdoor conditions for people and plants. Now that you've seen that researchers, planners, architects, etc. already use our microclimate model, let's get to the reasons for that. Why do people use especially this model for their microclimate modeling? Why has AmbiMed that outstanding role? So we'll have a quick view on AmbiMed model structure itself. E.g. how is the model built, what are the scales, and what are the main features of AmbiMed. The simulation model was initially designed by Michael Bruce in 1994, who is still head of development. Um, it is the leading simulation system worldwide, when the impact of architecture and urban planning on the microclimate shall be examined. Modeling microclimate, however, is a very challenging task, since all elements of the outdoor environment are connected with each other. AmbiMed as a holistic model tries to include all parts that play any kind of role in that system. By that, users are able to prove and evaluate beneficial effects of sustainable architecture, specific urban designs, green technologies, which is urban greenery, blue technologies, which are water-based solutions such as sprays or fountains, or whole new landscape visions, restructuring or whole urban quarters. In the end, AmbiMed mainly helps to achieve two goals to gain scientific experience and insights, and to help planners and architects to build heat-resilient cities. In our infographic that we already saw in the background, uh, we found a lot of the processes that take place at the same time during the simulation. Most of the processes feature great dependencies on each other. For example, irradiation heats up materials at a roof or sealed surface, and the following long wave and short wave radiation is emitted again, and the air above the material is heated up and transported upwards, whereas the wind flow might transport it sideways in addition to that. Radiation-based heat fluxes penetrate through building facades or through soil profile layers. Photosynthesis takes place in vegetation, causing water to be evaporated and transpirated, and thereby increasing the latent heat flux. As a result, roots will take up new water, which will then eventually dry out the soil layers. Such processes happen all the time in every part of the model, and they all together affect each other massively. Those are only a few superficial insights, but they already show the complexity of reality. However, modeling it is even more complex. Yet, AmbiMed seems to have found a way to model the most important processes quite accurately, as a lot of scientific evaluation studies have stated that over the last decades. Depending on the purpose of the simulation, different scales and details are digitized. There is, for example, a single building scale with an exact representation of windows, materials, building shapes, such as balconies or specific roof shapes. Um, e.g., how does a new tree or greenery uh, at a facade affect the building and its surrounding? Um, what you can already see here in these pictures is every cube or voxel is a specific object type. Either it is free atmosphere, soil, building, with then information about materials of each wall or roof layer, or vegetation, which uh, Hates the information, how dense it is, how much leaf is in there. Um, larger scale, next step is an urban quarter, probably the most used scenario. Those larger scenarios are used to compare between real cases and a new construct construction plan, um, or just used in scientific communities 
um, where the scale is used for theoretical approaches. To, for example, estimate a large-scale application effect of greenery or higher reflection materials. Uh, on larger PCs, even small cities can be simulated, or very large areas such as South Manhattan, as we see here. Those large-scale models are often used for demonstrational purposes or to examine general wind flow patterns in the city, or maybe uh, thermal hotspots that you find there. Um, temporal scales of Animat are seconds for the calculation time steps, and typical simulation periods feature 24 hours up to a week, or if necessary, necessary up to a whole year. Animat as a CFD model simulates the wind flow through a model area. There are sensible and latent heat fluxes, hot and or humid air, or for example pollutants, are transported through the area. Latest enhancements allow the user to change wind speed and direction, together with several other meteorological parameters such as temperature and humidity. They can be used as inflow parameters and can be changed for every 30 minute interval of the simulation. E.g. here we see a model area located in Phoenix, USA, uh, where the wind strongly differs from 8 a.m. in the morning to 4 p.m. in the afternoon. It increases from 0.75 meters up to 4.5 meters per second. Uh, the two parts of the picture were of course separately created and newly attached afterwards to directly see the comparison. Results can of course also be visualized in 3D and not only as a top-down view as you've seen before. The wind flow in 3D can also be represented by flying particles for video formats or from more static presentations with these so-called tubular bells that we see here. As I already mentioned, a very large drive of climate models in general is of course the solar radiation. In such densely built areas as in New York City, shading is pretty complex to be simulated. It can however be assumed that most parts of Manhattan are mostly shadowed by skyscrapers. And indeed, for most parts of inner Manhattan we will find only a few sun hours during the longest day of the northern hemisphere at 21st of June. Um, when we again have a look at the output in 3D, we can observe that most roofs are of course hit by the maximum amount of radiation for that day. Parts of wall facades are however shaded by the skyscraper next to them. Trees and vegetation in general play a crucial role in Envimet. They are the most used urban heat island mitigation measure and their processes are very complex to be modeled. Several modules are only simulating plants' behavior according to their leaf area density, their size, temperature, water availability, and so on. Here you can see a case study evaluating the effect of the urban setting on greenery. For example, evaporated water increases the air humidity around the tree. Energy is exchanged and the so-called latent heat flux leads to a reduction of the sensible heat flux, or simply said, the air temperature. However, courtyard trees, indicated by number one here, uh, experience, of course, less wind speed than standalone trees at a street or in a park. The humid air can does not be transported away as fast as the air around the other trees in the analysis. Leaf temperatures further increase and the latent heat flux is reduced. The tree's cooling effect is hence strongly reduced by its urban setting. Another exemplary module is the air pollution simulation. It can be simulated in addition to the standard model run. Roads are therefore defined with specific emission profiles according to their traffic volume and vehicle distribution, as you can see here for a mid-European city. Uh, our active chemistry module allows the transformation of NO and NO2 into ozone if hit by radiation. Near-surface ozone is a health threat for human beings and should does not exceed certain limits. In this case study, ozone concentration was additionally triggered by the activated isoprene module. Isoprene is a biogenic volatile organic compound emitted by certain tree species. As simplified said, these isoprene emissions increase ozone production if mixed with traffic emissions of NO and NO2. I only wanted to show you this very specific example to give you an insight into the depth and the possibilities that Envimet can give you. Uh, next to the nitrogen, oxide and dioxide as well as ozone, other pollutants such as particulate matter can of course also be simulated. And they can also vary in their size. After this overview on a few major modules and topics of Envimet, let's have a look at a typical Envimet workflow. At first, users need to create a project folder that will include all possible scenarios of a specific planning or research object. It makes sense to create a specific project database that only contains materials, plans and so on that are specifically used in this project. Those custom materials can be created or edited in the DB manager or database manager. 
The tree database can be modified in program Albero. There's of course already a huge database available with all kinds of materials, walls, roofs, plants, traffic emission profiles, etc. that you can use for your simulations. With the default or newly created database items, you can then start to create your model area. For that, Animat features two editors to either create a model area vector-based or rasterized, or in a mix of both. In Mondo, you can either digitize vector shapes by hand or import shape files that you received or downloaded or even created yourself in the geographical information system. After that, you are able to export a model area to its final rasterized form in a freely choosable resolution. The voxels are created um, based on vectorized information. You can then edit and finalize the model area in the raster-based editor spaces. Especially detailed 3D information such as windows are added there in general. This editor of course also allows to create a voxel-based model area from scratch. When a model area is created, some information is still needed for the start of the simulation. The user for example needs to specify the simulation period and meteorological conditions. After this process, the simulation itself can finally be run with the NV core. Output files are created for each hour of the simulation period and are specified e.g. on atmosphere, or building or vegetation results. In post-processing, Biomet allows the user to generate comfort index outputs, such as UTCI or PET, based on the simulation results. Those terminal indices can be used to quantify or classify the outer thermal comfort. It can be compared to felt temperature instead of hard data, telling the exact air temperature, for example. These indices therefore also take, uh, also take radiation, wind speed or humidity into account, instead of only relying on air temperature. In the end, all results of course need to be analyzed. This can be done with the program Leonardo, allowing uh, either 2D cuts through the model area or a total perspective in 3D view. We have already seen 2D and 3D maps generated with Leonardo in the previous slides. Uh, next to the official software suite of EnvyMet, there's also a vari variety of plugins available that allow the user to create EnvyMet models within their everyday software. The most famous plugins are added to SketchUp as well as Grasshopper, being a part of Rhino. Those programs are commonly used by architects. They usually design their buildings in great detail and want the area of interest then to be run in a microclimate model. The plugins now allow them to define their area directly out of the commonly known environment of e.g. Grasshopper, saving them a lot of time and effort. In the future there are surely more plugins to come. In the last part of our introduction to Envimed, we will have a look at an example case study called Seed Descart. It will show you a typical project for an Envimed application and insights or results that you can each achieve by the usage of EnviMed. CTS Card is a university campus near Paris that should be partly overhauled. During the planning process, EnviMed was used to examine the effects that the new plan would probably have. Therefore, two meteorological scenarios were defined, a regular summer day of 2017 and a possible hot summer day of 2050, with the possible implications caused by climate change. Those applications are mainly hotter air temperatures during nighttime and daytime, and a lower amount of soil water being available. In the beginning, two model areas were designed, the current status called status quo and the planning status. Both are simulated for each meteorological scenario, so that we are ending up with four simulations. Here we see the model area scenarios combined in one picture. It shows the vector-based model area in the program Monda. Gray buildings are old buildings that are also included in the planning scenario. Red buildings should be added. The green circles are representing trees of varying size. We can clearly see that there is a larger park in the western part of the model area, with the green dots there. After the export of both scenarios, we now see the resulting rasterized model areas after being opened in spaces. The red buildings of the planning scenario that we saw before are now only included in the model area on the right hand side. Here we see a typical Danvimet result map of a 2D cut through the model area, in this example in a height of 1.8 meter above the ground. Typical time steps to be analyzed at noon, afternoon or evening and night time. In this map we see the air temperature distribution at 13 o'clock, so more or less during midday in a time of highest radiation values. Very large differences of more than 3 Kelvin can be observed when comparing the air temperature above the streets with sealed surfaces in the east and the, west, and the values above the unsealed open soils in the park in the west. The park is of course also cooler because of large amount of trees shadowing the ground. Not directly included in this map, but more or less easy to identify is that we have very low wind speeds here. 
that can be seen by the hot air that accumulates above the streets, but is only marginally transported through the rest of the model area. When we now examine the results for the planning scenario, we see that the reduction of trees and the addition of buildings and sealed surface lead to much higher temperatures in general. Also, the cooling effect of the park is much more limited than in the status quo simulation. The newly planned buildings seem to work as a barrier and block the cool air from the park. This negative effect of the planning scenario can beautifully be visualized by such a comparison map which we see here. Most parts of the model area show a strong air temperature increase of up to 2.8 Kelvin in the planning scenario. Some parts are slightly cooler due to new shading structures and small changes in the wind flow. After checking the results of, a model, of model domains for the current climatic situation in 2017, let's now have a quick look at the results for the meteorological conditions of a heat wave in 2050. When we compare the results of the current climate situation with the results of the 2050 scenario, we find much higher temperatures in general, as the legend is applied to the four Kelvin hotter inflow conditions. The pattern of hotter and cooler air, however, looks pretty similar. Unshaded grass is observed to get hotter in the 2050 scenario, since the soil water availability is limited. If we now check the thermal comfort index PET, we do find similar patterns between both climatic scenarios again. The legend, however, also needs to be adjusted again to better fit the values displayed on the map. The PET temperature values are commonly classified to give a clear result of thermal comfort at a specific point of the model area. The cooler blue areas are all shadowed, since direct radiation is one of the key factors in thermal comfort calculations. Those values range between 26 degrees Celsius for the current climate conditions and 32 great degrees Celsius for 2050 scenarios. So spoken in thermal comfort classes, thermal comfort in shadows increased from warm to hot. In areas of direct sunlight and low, low wind speeds, we find uh, values above 50 degrees Celsius. 50 degrees Celsius is the highest thermal comfort class and can be expressed as extreme heat. In summary, the new plans for say discard and developments induced by climate change yield increasing temperatures and a strong decline in thermal comfort for human beings on the campus. And that is why we made some suggestions for a redesign of the area. The redesign should of course be only minimally invasive to still follow the plan's objectives. Our suggested heat mitigation measures are an addition of trees near the buildings and main streets in the first place uh, and an introduction of water elements such as fountains or water sprays in the second place. And as a third measure, we altered the morphology of the newly planned buildings near the park. We suggested to elevate the center part of those buildings by 5 meters to allow the cooler air of the park to flow through the barrier and by that cool the whole campus area. A comparison of the simulated redesign with the original planning scenario showed that the newly added measures would decrease air temperatures by up to 1.5 Kelvin. Widespread distribution of the blue areas and comparison map shows that the additional features did not only have a local effect. As expected, could the cool air flow out of the park into the campus area. However, especially the increase of latent heat flux by water elements and plants caused the largest cooling effects. If we analyze the effect of the redesign on thermal comfort again, we find that the large-scale air temperature reductions only marginally improve the thermal comfort. They are more or less invisible due to the large scale of the legend color ramp. Strong improvements are dominantly caused by new shading structures, which mostly consist of the newly added trees. With a decrease of more than 15 Kelvin, thermal comfort could even be improved by several classes. Yeah, after a short trip around Enrymed, I want to give you a short summary on what we saw. I hopefully could give you some insights into the community and the application of our holistic microclimate model. Though naming only a few small examples, I hope that you still got an impression how versatile and incredible deep environment can be. By simulating large areas and multiple different scenarios, you will find the best solution for every planning or research question that you may have. Especially with the ongoing climate change and the progressing urbanization, mitigating urban heat stress will be one of the major goals of humankind. Let us work all together in one common goal to keep our cities livable for everyone. Thank you very much.